everybody, this is Mandy from Chapel Forge. So today I am working on butternut squash, acorn squash, and these enormous neck pumpkins that I got. So basically I'm gonna be making soup mix. Um, I'm just going to powder these squashes and pumpkins um, and basically just have the powder in the pantry so that we can pull it out, rehydrate it, and add to it whatever we want, whether that's gonna be spices or heavy cream, um, onions, things like that. So I'm gonna show you this process. It's so simple if you have a freeze dryer. Um, if you don't have a freeze dryer, you could potentially do the same thing on the fruit leather trays um, in your dehydrator, but a freeze dryer would really be the best for this. I'll put a link in the description of the freeze dryer that I have. It's from Harvest Right. I have the medium silver. I've talked about it on here a zillion times and it is, I know it's a big cost up front, but it is an invaluable tool. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing to get my squashes prepped. All right. So my helper here is, you know, playing in the sink and washing up the squashes. So they're not like super dirty. They just have some dirt on them from the field. So I'm having my acorn squash. I'm going to have these butternut squash, just lay them on these cookie sheets. I have my oven preheating. Um, I have a convection oven. It doesn't matter. You would just want to set it to like 250. Shh. You just want to set it to like 250. The time on these is probably going to be, I'm going to guess an hour. When I go to do these neck pumpkins, they are enormous like this one must weigh <clears throat> it's got to weigh close to 20 pounds it is the biggest neck pumpkin i have ever seen um now neck pumpkins are good for apparently these aren't all over the country they're very popular here in lancaster county in pennsylvania um so if you have them where you are tell me where you are and if you have them or you don't or if you've heard of them or not or whatever um i know i've definitely seen them in seed catalogs i just maybe they're not as popular so the neck pumpkins are really great for pumpkin pie. Um, we don't make a ton of pies, but nonetheless, it would also make really great soup. So I'll just powder this in the freeze dryer after it's freeze dried. We'll powder it and I'll show you that process. It's super easy. And then I can rehydrate that and I can make it into pumpkin pie, pumpkin roll, um, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin soup. Like Seriously, the options are endless. All right, so I have my butternut squash and my acorn squash basically just halved. Um, some of them still had a little bit from the vine on, so I cut that off. Now, when I freeze dry these, I don't have to worry about the skins and the seeds. I'm just gonna freeze dry all of that together. So you'll see that I did not de-seed these. Everything is still inside. There's like one or two that I took the insides out because some of the seeds were a little moldy, so I just threw those to the chickens. Um, but that's all you have to do is just have these and then we're going to throw them in the oven. I did put a teeny bit of water on the tray. It's maybe not totally necessary. I think these are going to take an hour-ish. I'll check these when they're fork tender. Um, they'll be ready to come out. I'm going to do those gigantic neck pumpkins by themselves because I'm probably going to have them in here for like three hours, I'm guessing, because they're huge. I'm definitely going to have to cut them down more than half. Um, if you don't want to heat up your kitchen, like it's... 75 degrees here at the beginning of November in Pennsylvania, which is insane. Um, you know, typically we're maybe 50s during the day and definitely having frost overnight, but we're not there yet. Supposedly it's coming this weekend. So you could also do these in a roaster. Um, they could like, you know, kind of stack on top of each other. You can do them in a roaster. You could do them in a crock pot. Uh, my mom, you know, it's just her and my dad. So they'll do like an acorn squash or a butternut squash in the instant pot. Um, so any of those options would work. I'm using my stove because obviously I have these three pretty full trays and I just want to get it all done at once. So we're going to get these thrown in. It's preheated at 250. I'm going to set a timer for an hour. Um, and then we'll come back in and check on. Them. All right. So these actually took almost two hours. I'm a little surprised because they're not super big, but whatever. I just left the stove go and it was fine. So, um, I pulled these out. I probably could have pulled them a little sooner. I got a little busy making dinner, whatever. They'll be fine. So I'm going to let these cool and then I'm going to put them in the Vitamix. We're going to get them pureed and then we will get them on freeze dry trays. So I put these in the fridge overnight because it was just getting too late and I didn't have time to do it, which is fine. Um, we're going to drop these in the Vitamix and I'll show you what the puree looks like when it comes out. We're going to break down all these seeds and skins and all that. And it's all going to go on the freeze dry trays. All right. So I put four in here maybe, um, which is great that about not quite fills the cancer but I don't want to get too excited um if you notice that you have any seeds or maybe you just have like a normal blender you don't have a Vitamix that um you know really grinds stuff up really well hold on you can definitely 
um, blend it up as best you can. The reason that I blend it is so that when I put it on the freeze dry trays, you know, if I just put those whole squashes on or even halved, first of all, they're probably too big, but if I cut it into cubes, I can't fit as much on. So I found that if I puree things like this, hold on. If I puree things like this, then I can fit more in the freeze dry trays and it works out great. So what I can do too, is when it comes out, if I notice, hey, I missed a few seeds, I can put that freeze dried powder in those sheets back into the Vitamix just to give it one more good grinding before I store it. All right, in typical me fashion, I never finish projects on the day that I start them. So I got my uh, butternut squash, two trays of butternut squash, two trays of acorn squash on the freeze dry trays. They're gonna go down into the freezer. I'll show you what my rack looks like um, and why I pre-freeze. All right, so I've showed this before. This is the rack that I have from Frozen Right. I can link that in the description. Um, I have my four trees in here. This works out perfectly. You may have to do a little bit of finagling to figure out like what freezer it's gonna fit in really well. Um, but I'm gonna put those in there. I always pre-freeze before I put stuff into my freeze dryer. It just kind of helps extend um, or cut down on the time in the freeze dryer. And it almost always guarantees that I'm not gonna have things blow up in me. One time I had grape juice like just totally explode. Um, I must not have had it frozen solid. So I always pre-freeze before I put stuff in the freeze dryer. All right, so I pulled our acorn squash and our butternut squash out of the freeze dryer. And I'll show you how I get this powdered so that we can keep it in a much smaller space than if you cubed it and pressure canned it or, you know, sat the raw vegetables in a root cellar or whatever. If you've never freeze dried food like this, um, it usually comes off in a sheet. So what I do then is I just break it up into pieces and put it in the Vitamix. If you don't have a Vitamix, you can use a blender. You could frankly probably use a food processor. Um, you can also just put it in Mylar bags um, in the sheets. I wanna store this in mason jars, so I wanna make sure that I get it down to a nice powder. But I mean, honestly, you could do it in a mortal and pestle or whatever. Whatever you do, you just wanna work as quickly as possible. It doesn't have to be done in like five seconds, but as quickly as possible so you don't introduce moisture. <laughs> go through the Vitamix you should just have nice powder like this it has amazing color um, so I'm gonna do up the acorn squash and then I'll show you how I store this. all right so we have two quart jars I have one quart jar of acorn squash one quart jar of butternut squash this is gonna be amazing to just rehydrate and we could rehydrate it with broth or with water, milk, whatever, and make soup. It'd be a really quick soup. Um, put some pumpkin seeds on it or whatever. It'll be delicious this winter. Or you can just add this into like chili or pasta sauce or anything that you wanna flavor. Um, so this is how you take four acorn squash and four butternut squash and fit them into two quart jars. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.